Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Thank you to all of our Patreons who support us every single month on the channel and to all of the new subscribers and the existing ones who always leave nice comments down below. Zelda Link to the Past was a game I loved growing up, I mean who didn't? When Ocarina of Time came along, it was a revolution but for me, Majora's Mask carried a lot more mystery. It was that atmosphere I remember. Anodyne is a mysterious 16-bit 2D Zelda-like experience with a haunting soundtrack, but is it more than the sum of its quite simplistic parts? Let's find out. I read a lovely article on the story of Anodyne and it does a brilliant job of explaining the experience. Now the article, which I'll ping down in the description, talks about the difference between the conceived and the perceived story. The conceived story in a game is essentially the one that's planned, scripted and delivered to the player. It's the emotional hooks placed throughout the world, the conversation that elaborates on a situation and the inevitable climax and resolution. While the perceived story is far more experiential, the story being told by the player and their actions in the world. This is, for me, one of the reasons that Dark Souls works so well as a narrative experience despite being very reliant on the player. You uncover the world and then piece together your own experiences to tell the story of Lodran. Anodyne has a conceived story of sorts, but it is so full of interpretable elements that you end up piecing together your own tale. You begin your adventure as Young. Yeah, the, the character's called Young. And it isn't clear if you're dreaming or not. The ambiguity persists as the game develops. The writing of the game is self-referential and, at times, ludicrous, and it presents itself as a grand and epic adventure to save the world, but is in fact much more a surrealist mixture of these elements. I guess in many ways this is reflective of a dream, whereby you often experience things but the overall narrative can be vague and confusing while still seeming to make sense. While some may find the general lack of clarity to be a negative, for someone who's played hundreds upon hundreds of story-driven experiences, for me the tale of Anodyne is a refreshing take that requires much more of the player. Story scores 16 out of 20. The familiar top-down Zelda-like approach is also equally easy to control using the left stick to move around or the D-pad if you so choose. And the buttons allow for basic attacks with your broom, which is the default weapon. As you progress through the game, you will unlock several new abilities and skills. One of the main ones is the latter ability to jump using a pair of boots you're gifted. The core gameplay involves moving through a series of screens, killing enemies and trying to unlock or progress into new areas of this dreamlike world. Well. Nothing here is particularly original, you meet several unusual characters throughout your journey whose purpose it is to give colour and exposition in this strange place. They will often deliver quite bizarre monologues that will leave you scratching your head but for some strange reason don't seem at all out of place in the world of Anodyne. You begin in a hub-like area which serves as a conduit through which you travel to different teleporters throughout the world, however these are only unlocked once you've visited them physically. Enemies come in a variety of unusual shapes and sizes. These are often quite easy to overcome. You will also find some dungeons of sorts, which require the usual finding of a key or pressing a button to gradually work your way through their maze-like levels. There is a decent amount of problem solving involved in the traversing of these areas though, which really carry the sense of exploration when combined with the unique aesthetic and lovely audio package, but more on that later. As you would expect, at the end of a dungeon-like area you may face a boss. While not overly challenging, they are quite interesting and never felt unfair. Once you have vanquished your foe, you will usually receive a health upgrade which will be helpfully flying around the area. Another strange but lovely little touch was how these then swoop to your health bar and plug themselves down nicely and they plonk themselves alongside the other bits of health. Just 
a nice little touch. The world is dotted with save points, which you just have to hit with your broom to activate, and if your health reaches zero, you'll find yourself respawning here. Overall, the difficulty is quite well balanced, and you never feel overwhelmed by the enemies, but there are some tricky platforming-like sections later in the game to keep you on your toes. I mentioned that the main weapon in the game is a broom, and that's exactly right. You are equipped with a lovely tool of ultimate sweeping. Hilariously, you can also gain upgrades for this, which change the patterns with which you sweep dust at your enemies. Yep, you heard me correctly. You kill the quarry in this game by sweeping dust at them. And the upgrades include such wonders as the extended dust attack and the wide area of effect dust attack. It always feels like the developers are watching you somewhere, having a chuckle as you excitedly equip one of these only to stare blankly at the character who now has an entirely new, pointless skill as the basic attack was just fine. Other than learning to jump, which helps you to unlock and reach new areas of the overworld map, which is quite large, you also have the strange ability to collect piles of dust on the aforementioned broom and sweep it into nearby water and then surf on it to reach distant shores. <laughs> There are some irritations that come with the retro territory, such as when you leave a screen, all the enemies will respawn instantly. As sometimes it's a real pain, as if you're in a maze-like section, you may be facing the same enemy over and over again. Other ones require smart use of the environment to kill them, and again, you must use the dust collected on your broom in unique ways to solve certain environmental puzzles, although these are quite simple. As if to reinforce the trolling of the developers, there is a handily placed shop, selling anything from guns to other useful items. However, they are all ludicrously overpriced, and there's one other small catch. There isn't any money in the game. Gameplay is a mesmeric experience, and spending a few hours each night with the kids working my way through this one has been a real pleasure. You don't need to have enjoyed early pixel art games to enjoy this, but you must have a certain openness to the strange and macabre to truly embrace Anodyne, which is equal parts strange, calming and creepy. Gameplay scores 18 out of 20. The musical score matches the on-screen visuals perfectly, with a mixture of what initially sounds like your typical Zelda clone music, shifting to a much darker tone. Often quite somber, this is juxtaposed with more light-hearted and, dare I say it, sweet tracks? The whole audio palette is just a great fit for the dreamlike visuals. Sound effects are suitably mono and generally will sound exactly as you would imagine for any fans of Top Downs of old. For me, the visuals are spot on. The 16-bit aesthetic seems familiar, but with enough new to keep it unique. The overall pastel-esque colour palette is certainly reminiscent of the Game Boy Colour era, but there are sections where it looks entirely modern. Despite the low pixel count, some nice characters have been designed, and these add to the quirky little adventure. The girl on her bike who pops up to grant you the occasional gift along your way, and a few others, will stick in your memory long after playing. Audio is very good, and it gives you the rare feeling of escapism that can be so hard sought after and rarely found. Audio scores 18 out of 20, and the visuals 16 out of 20. I didn't realise that this game was so cheap. It's £8.99, $9.99 or €9.99. Now I would say that this is an easy pickup if what I've said has interested you at all. The game isn't the most challenging, but it really is engaging and offers a rare and unique experience in a familiar setting. The story will be your own and the philosophical questions you may ask yourself along the way might stick with you just as long. Value scores 17 out of 20. Well, I'm pretty shocked to be honest. This is a game originally made by two students. Now understand me, don't go into this game expecting bells and whistles and to be magicked away on a magical mystery tour of a Zelda Link to the Past remake or anything like that. No, it isn't that at all. Expect to grab a hot drink, stick your feet up and escape for a while each day. Expect to question the game. Expect occasional frustrations, but also the same types of feelings films like Stand By Me gave you with the boys walking off up the railway tracks, not knowing where they were headed. Anodyne scores a switch-up score of 
Thanks so much for watching. We are giving away our free Nintendo Switch game in the next video, so make sure you've got the silly little notifications bell thingy switched on. And as always, guys, thank you to the Patreons, and for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!